Hello everybody, welcome back to Higarashi no Nakakoro ni Chapter 1 Onikakushi. My name is Meister Blue, and we got our first little tidbit with Detective Oishi in the last episode, which, very ominous, very sad news, Tomitake-san has been murdered. Ooh, not cool, especially since this game makes you really like him. The anime and the manga, they don't tell you two shits about him. This game makes you really like him. He's like a big brother to all the kids in this village, and that makes it really, really hit when he gets killed. So very sad, very sad. But I have agreed with the detective to help if I see anything out of the ordinary, I will tell him in the hopes that we can catch the perpetrators behind his death. And now I just lost the game with Ranachan because I, I like her a bit. I like her a bit. And so me and her are going to have our penalty game. Now then, I rank first. I, I ranked first, so I decide what you'll be buying for the gopher penalty. What, what will she make us buy? I wonder. I wonder. Let's blacklist the drugstore. That was your. No, let's blacklist the drugstore. That was your aim, wasn't it? Huh? I don't have any business at the drugstore. This old man's already got a list prepared for you on this piece of paper. Oh, there's a lot written here. You're paying for it, right? A lot. Damn it, what is she making us buy? Two blocks of tofu, shampoo and conditioner, apple vinegar and fried tofu. The heck is this? <coughs> I'm gross. It looks more like a shopping list than a penalty. Me was certain she was going to win today. Rule 7 of our society, you cannot refuse any penalty. Here's some money. The shampoo I usually get is Fruit Fable. Thanks. This is just your grossly, grocery list. I promised myself that if I won next time, I'd make her go buy hemorrhoid cream. Hey, end of the chapter. I, every time I see that, I think, the way they say it at the end of each episode in the show. You received new tips! There are more than four perpetrators and search notice. Alright, well, let's first and foremost let us save. I'm gonna save down here. Not a clue! Gwee! Sweet, I got achievement! You guys might not be able to see because my face is gonna be there. Damn it! Hindsight. View your new tips! So we got two. We'll go with. There are more than four perpetrators? Oh, that's a big word. <laughs> Hypovolemic. Hypovolemic. Hypovolemic shock induced by clawing out their own throat. Tissue is packed under the nails. Not someone else's nails. It's undoubtedly the, the by the individual's own nails. The shape of the scars also matches. Yeah, I know the immediate cause of death was suicide. I get it. You're saying the cause of death is unnatural, right? I don't know who's talking. Oh, maybe it's Keiichi and Oishi. It's kind of like when your back itches and you scratch a little too hard and draw blood. Some of Tomitake's fingernails have been pulled out. It's actually quite simple to pull out one's own nails. But it really hurts. Under normal circumstances, the pain would prevent you from completely pulling them out. Also, there were a lot of bruises on Tomitake's body. It's clear from the shape of them that he was assaulted first by someone, or a group of people. According to the toxology report, the deceased was in an extreme state of hysteria right before death. Then he fought back and clawed out his own throat. Oh, then he fought back and clawed out his own throat because of how hysterical he had become? The guys attacking him certainly would have been surprised by that. It is possible that in such an abnormal environment, a person could perform acts that the sane individual couldn't possibly imagine. Of course, those are very rare cases. Actually, Oishikun, that wood plank the deceased used as a weapon? <laughs> oh no! Leons! They only found sand and the paint from the guardrail on it. What about cloth fibers or skin? Nothing. The deceased didn't strike... Oh, it's the police officer probably talking to him. Nothing. The deceased didn't strike the assailants. Or it could have been... Or could it... Or it could be they took the plank he was fighting back with. Or back with. In that case, they wouldn't have gone out of their way to replace it with another. They'd take them all. 
<laughs> That's true. Tomitake is pretty built and tanned. He was quite athletic. Hmm? That's right. He was pretty active. Well then. I can't imagine what kind of sports he did when he was alive, but I think his physical strength would be on the higher side. Meaning he would be difficult to overpower in a brawl. Well, a bunch of little kids were managed to pin his arms down and draw on him, so he might not be as strong as he looks. Those could be Spongebob arms. If a man with such physique sensed he was in danger and swung the plank around quickly, it's just unthinkable that it, would even nick the that it wouldn't even nick the perpetrator. And his opponent was unarmed. This guy had a wooden plank, so you'd think he'd hit him at least once. To surround and take some take down someone with his own physique. I wonder how many people would take it would take. You dimwit, you should know better than anyone else. Have you forgotten your bad cop days? If I was to take down this guy, how many would I need? When a group wants to take down big prey, it's fundamental to attack with numbers. I'd guess about four. Even if there was a gap in their strength, they'd manage. Then there would be there were there were quite a few perpetrators. So any drunk and disorderly groups of more than four are suspicious. A group of four or more. Just they had that many, they then couldn't they have hidden the body in just in a less obvious location? Or did he somehow break away from that fatal predicament? Then there would be no reason to commit suicide. Moreover, I still can't comprehend the irregular way he died. It's full of mysteries. That's under serious consideration on my end, too. I'll be examining it as thoroughly as possible, but don't get your hopes up. After all, we've never encountered a death like this before. I'm not hoping for much, but I am looking forward to the results. Oishi-san, the chief is calling you. Thanks. See you around. Yeah. Best wishes. I need to come up with a different voice for Oishi-san. It's not as fitting. He's kind of an older man in the show. Maybe I'll give him a Master Roshi voice. <laughs> Let's go take a look at that search, Rodus. That's a horrible thing. I'm so sorry. Jiro Tomitake, deceased. Resided in a cheap hotel in Shishibone City. Registered under the name Jiro Tomitake. Pen name. Travels via folding bike. No license. The bicycle was found 300 meters away, abandoned at the site of the forest path. Present on the day of the festival, accompanied by the missing Mio Takaro, she's missing, was seen around 9 p.m. by police, location afterwards unknown, held residence in Hinamizawa for one week each season for the last five to six years. Freelance photographer specializing in wild birds. Check with magazine companies. Nothing suspicious in the film located among the articles of the deceased. Wallet was among the was among the articles of the of the deceased. Mere act of violence. From the contents of his wallet, he spent most of his time around Tokyo and Chiba, along with Sobu National Railway Line. No individual matching the name Jiro Tomitake in the residency records of any of the Tokyo wards. Compare teeth and dental records. Send to Metro Police. Attach a photo. Send to Metro Police. Contacting magazines regarding Jiro Tomitake. Mio Takano, missing. Nurse at Irei Clinic. Became close to Tomitake through her passion for wild bird photography. Resides in Okinomiya, X District, Triple X. Single and in the Triple X District. Nice! Very good. Way to go, Mio Takano. Witnessed accompanying Tomitake at the festival grounds. Currently missing. Abducted? Or maybe a suspect? An important person of interest. Had no motive to kill the deceased. Squabble from jealousy? <sighs> the chirping of the night bugs and whatnot is getting me going. Need to thoroughly investigate their relationship, place of work, etc. Need to get information from the police on scene again. I want some cream puffs. <laughs> what the fuck? Four jumbo ones. Oishi. God damn it, Oishi. Screw you. People are dead and missing. You're talking about cream puffs in their death notes. Let's continue on. Sleepy. Whoa, that was a really big yawn, can't you, Ken? I'm usually awake once it's time to eat, but doesn't look like I can do that today. 
I was watching TV until late last night. I'm so tired right now. That wasn't a real yawn, that was acting. I'm that I'm that good. Uh, it comes from 20 plus years of training. Was one of those raunchy TV shows you loved so much on last night? Yeah. How extremely vile! Don't jump to conclusions. They're right, but don't jump there. It's perfectly normal for boys. Nothing to be ashamed about. It's perfectly normal for girls too, Rika-chan, but you're just, you might be a little young. Rika not patting my head only made me feel worse. Could you just let me pass out for this lunch break? No, seriously. Hmm, my, why you, my, you think I would just sit here and allow that? I'll get really angry if you disturb me. Really angry. <laughs> God damn it! I'm so sleepy and I have no idea why. This was just dreadful. Just so sleepy. I slumped my head into the desk and drifted off into an afternoon nap. It seemed that Satoko had responded, but pretended not to hear. I pretended not to hear. Cut it out, Satoko Shan Oh, that's me. Keichikun fell asleep. He's sleeping face. So cute. You can take him home later. Let him be for now. I'm down. Totally down. Let's move over there. It'd be rude to wait Ke it'd be rude to Keiji if we bothered him now. Rika Chan really is a good girl. Let's not wake him up, even if the teacher comes back. I take that back. The excuse that I didn't sleep much last night because I was watching TV was a lie. I was in bed at the usual time, but because of the conversation with Alicia-san that afternoon, I didn't get much sleep. Just spending the day like this, it's almost as if the incident with Tomitake-san didn't happen at all. It made me think, was Alicia-san just trying to deceive me? But it was probably the truth. One thing was certain, I couldn't speak to anyone about it. He wanted my assistance, but I really didn't know what anything about it. If I knew I wasn't going to be of any help, I probably would have, wouldn't have listened in the first place. It ended up with me again regretting learning something I didn't need to know. If I had never learned about it, I would, without a doubt, be goofing off at the rest of them right now. I couldn't help but resent Oishi-san for this. Huh? When was that? I heard he wasn't there the next day. It appears he vanished the night of the Watanagashi. Mion whispered to keep others from listening, but I could hear it clearly. On the other hand, Rena's voice was even harder to pick up. But I could still tell what she was quite upset about, or that she was quite upset. It couldn't be. Are they talking about Tomitake-san? Only intake, or itake. Not sure. That's all I know. I would have to feign ignor ignorance about this topic because I needed to keep it a secret. Rather than waking up and being forced to just and being forced to just join the conversation, it was much easier just to sit there and pretend I was asleep and listen in on their discussion. Wait, why did I have to pretend to be asleep while eavesdropping on my friend's conversation? The guilt stung. So, and me, there are others, right? Two? But they don't know if it's from the curse or if this was an onikakushi. Onikakushi? Onikakushi. Onikakushi. Sorry. To be hidden away by a demon? What a mysterious phrase. I did, however, get the feeling it meant nothing good. Eh, well, it was another, right? Right? If it's Oyashiro-sama's, yeah. But, but, this year, at all? Grandma and the mayor had talked about it. Seems they'd talked to the police about it beforehand. They said they'd take care of whatever happens this year without causing a commotion. Then, without us knowing it, someone had hit them. You mean? Maybe. Next could me, I wonder. Don't worry. You got home safely. It's not allowed, right? That was a long time ago. Let's stop talking about this. Amidst the uncomfortable mood, both of them went silent. The entirety of this conversation was still a bit unclear, but... A few parts caught my attention. First of all, the term onikakushi. To be demoned away. By the context it was used in, I would guess it's similar to being spirited away. 
which I'm pretty sure the, the translated name of the first arc is um, Spirited Away by a Demon, or... See, I have the manga. Yeah, at least in the manga, and it's a similar translation for the anime, the first one is called Abducted by Demons, or Demoned Away, or whatnot, and it basically refers to the fact that every time this happens, someone is killed and someone is also, someone disappears. They, they go missing and no one knows what happens to them, and they're considered demoned away. I suspected that it was meant because Tomotake-san and that woman, it really bugged me that I don't know her name, vanished after the Watanagashi. The next thing that stuck out was when Reina said, There's another one, right? Mion also said, If it's oyashiro samas yeah. Responding to something. If it's oyashiro samas curse, then there had to be two victims. Is that what she meant? Come to think of it, I remember Mion saying at the beginning that they didn't know if it was from the curse or if it was the case of a case of Onikakushi. It seems that the curse and being demoned away are different things, and they were phenomena that were paired together. I recalled Tomitake-san's terrible end. That wasn't something as elegant as disappearing. That horrendous end would be best described as cursed. Then the woman with him. It means she vanished because she was demoned away? What I do know is, there's normally an even number of victims in the, of the curse proper. And the last point that bothered me was Rena. Rena was frightened. For what reason, I didn't know. However, she knew that something had made her a potential target for oyashiro samas curse. If I recalled correctly, oyashiro sama would, should be the guardian deity of Hinamizawa. Isn't a guardian deity supposed to defend the citizens and drive out invaders? If I recall correctly, yesterday Oni Oishi-san said that, the original, it, that originally the targets were enemies of the village, but recently there was no longer any distinction between them or regular outsiders. But if that's the case, then I would think that I'd, I'd be more likely the target, having moved here more recently than Rena. From her composure, I could infer that she was grimly certain that she would be next. I should probably relay what I just heard now to Oishi-san. Informing the police of what I heard by eavesdropping on my friends while pretending to be asleep it made me feel terrible. It raised a few questions and left me with a bad taste in my mouth. Would it be better not to seek answers to those questions? As I continued to learn more and more, I felt like I had fallen past the point of no return. I would definitely regret this one day. I would definitely regret ever having learned of these events. The teacher approaches! Cage san You must awaken! In the distance, I could hear the ring of the handbell signaling the start of afternoon classes. Gah, I couldn't sleep at all. I hastily opened my eyes and raised my head up. It was in that moment when I leaned against the back of my seat. Ah! There was a thumbtack stuck to the back of- You s- Ugh, I hate you so much, Satoko! That's not cool, that freaking hurt! Circumstantial evidence was enough. Satoko! Guilty without trials. Capital punishment. I furiously jumped up from my seat. I tripped as if my feet were tangled up. My shoelaces had been tied together. Not bad, Satoko. While I was sleeping, you were able to conceal your presence and able to pull off this fine piece of work. The teacher came in right as I was about to pull off my shoes and tackle Satoko. <laughs> Did you notice that our teacher has arrived, Keiji-san? Take your seat. Clump, clump, wish, boif. Not caring one bit, I made her eat a flick to the forehead. Gage Sand is being mean! Hey, don't pick on the younger kids, my barcoon! I'm not, I'm picking on a demon! And with that, I'll end this episode. Thank you all for watching. I'm starting to get the creepy stuff and it's starting to give me the heebie jeebies. So, my name is Meister Blue and I will see you all in the next video. Until then, everybody, peace out. Have a good day.